Today, I'm going to talk about the IELTS writing paper. My talk will be primarily of three parts. First, I'll let you know what the tasks are, and some advice will be given to you on how to get around these tasks. And lastly, I will talk about the assessment criteria the assessor used to gauge your work. The IELTS writing paper consists of two major tasks which the candidate has to finish within 60 minutes. Task 1 is a short report. You have to write a descriptive report based on a bar chart, a pie chart, a line graph, a table, a process diagram, or a combination of this. In other words, you have to describe facts, figures, trends, and um, summarize data or describe a process. And the word limit for this task is 150, and you have only 20 minutes' time to finish the task. You should assume that uh, your work will be read by a university lecturer, and therefore only formal language should be used. ICQ style language, contracted forms, and informal language should not be used in your work. Task 1 could look like this. There is some advice on the time limit and word limit. For answering this question, you should interpret the line graph, which shows how many tons of fish were caught from year 1975 to year 2000, and a bar chart which indicates how many fish have been consumed in different countries. Remember, the major goal that you have to achieve for this task is to show significant trends or information or vital differences or similarities. In other words, you should not report every detail you see, and therefore a year-by-year -year report on how many tons of fish are caught in every ocean and how many tons of fish are consumed in every country is not necessary. Now I will give you some tips to get around this task. First, pay attention to the word limit. An underlength piece of work will be heavily penalized. Second, clarity. Describe the information accurately without distortion. Remember, do not add your own words to the given information. Next, approximation. Please make sure that you use approximation language. Say, for example, if you have 79%, say the majority of instead of 79%. Language of approximation helps the reader to understand you better. And next is relevance. Please make sure that you give the most significant information. Insignificant information or details are not necessary. The second task is about producing a discursive essay on a given topic. You are given 40 minutes to write at least 250 words. Remember, your work will be read by an educated reader without special knowledge on the topic. And the task is actually very similar to the long academic essay you wrote for your EAP course. Task 2 could look like this. There is information on time limit, your reader, and word limit. And your question could look like this, a very long statement. And you should use your own ideas, knowledge, and experience, and support your argument with examples and relevant evidence. Now I will give you some advice on task two. Number one, do not write fewer than the required number of words. An underlength piece of work will be heavily penalized. Number two, do not miss any part of the question. There are questions with two to three parts. Failure to answer one part of the question means you have not analyzed the question thoroughly. Three, do not copy the question word for word as your introduction. If you do so, the examiner will not count this part of your work. Number four, do not forget that IELTS is an international examination. It is incorrect to assume that the question only asks you about situations in Hong Kong only. 
And number five, do not memorize essay. You will lose mark if the examiner finds that your work is actually copied. And six, use your notes from your EAP course. They are very useful if you want some information on discursive essays. Now let's see how your tasks are assessed. Task one is assessed on the following three criteria. Number one, task fulfillment. You can ask yourself these questions. Have you followed the instructions exactly? Have you given a clear, accurate, and relevant description of the information? Number two, coherence and cohesion. It is about whether the writing is well organized and the sentences are logically linked. Number three, vocabulary and sentence structures. You have to demonstrate to your examiner that you can use a variety of vocabulary and sentence structures. Task two is assessed based on these criteria. Number one, argument, ideas, and evidence. You can ask yourself these questions. Are the ideas and evidence relevant to the topic? Are the ideas presented coherently and clearly? Number two is about your communicative quality. It's about whether you have communicated your ideas uh, with some degree of fluency. And lastly, vocabulary and sentence structure. You have to vary your sentence structure and vocabulary in order to score a higher bending.